Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green ramp deck titled Green Greatness, as we're playing with four copies of In Search of Greatness, as suggested by my supporters on Patreon, a two-mana enchantment saying at the beginning of your upkeep, you may cast a permanent spell from your hand with mana value equal to one plus the highest mana value among other permanents you control without paying its mana cost, and if you don't you still get to scry one each turn. So In Search of Greatness is a bit of a mouthful, but basically what it means is if we have another 2-drop in play, we can play a 3-drop for free, if we have a 4-drop we can play 5-drop for free, and that's kind of the top of our curve, so we won't be putting any 6-drops in play for free. But the reason In Search of Greatness is potentially powerful in this deck is that we're also playing with 4 copies of Leyline of Abundance, the 4-man enchantment, saying if Leyline of Abundance is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. So now all of a sudden we start out with a 4-mana permanent in play, so if we play a turn 2 In Search of Greatness on our third upkeep, we could play a 5-drop without paying its mana cost, so we can potentially cheat a Vivian Monster's Advocate or Nissa who shakes a world in play for free, which of course is quite powerful. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got some Accelerants, with the full playset of Lenor Elves and Gilded Goose, which of course also synergizes very nicely with the effect from Leyline of Abundance, which is still very powerful even without In Search of Greatness in play, because whenever we tap a creature for mana we add an additional green to our mana pool, and we also have a Mana Sync ability for 8 mana, putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, so that can also help us end the game once we have a bunch of mana creatures in play. Then at 2 mana we've got more mana creatures with the full playset of Leafkin Druid, 2 mana for an O3 that taps for green, but if we control 4 or more creatures it adds double green instead, and our plan is to flood the board with a bunch of mana elves, so the Leafkin Druid will become active. Then we also have the full playset of Paradise Druid, 2 1 that has hexproof as long as it's untapped and then can tap for 1 mana of any color, and 2 copies of Tangled Florahedron as a 2 mana 1 1 that taps for green can also be played as a tap land. And the reason we're playing some of these creatures that can also be played as lands is that we just increase the density of spells in our deck to synergize with In Search of Greatness, and we also have a few effects that let us draw cards whenever we cast a creature, like the Best Cherry and Beast Whisper, so those also benefit from having creatures like Kalsandu Mammoth and Tangled Florahedron in our deck. Mammoth a 3 mana 3 3 with Landfall giving it plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn can also be played as Kalsandu Valley, which comes into play tapped. Then we also have two copies of Growing Rites of Itlomok, a 3-mana legendary enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, we look at the top four cards of our library, and we can reveal a creature card from among them to put into our hand. And then at the beginning of our end step, if we control four or more creatures, we can transform Growing Rites into Cradle of the Sun, which can tap for green mana, or can add green mana for each creature we control, so that can also get out of hand, and we can later even untap it with a Nissa who shakes the world to tap it again, making a lot of mana to help us go off with or various card draw effects, and then we also have two copies of Lifecrafter's Best Cherry, a 3 mana artifact, which also lets us scry one at the beginning of each upkeep, and whenever we cast a creature spell we may pay green mana, and if we do we get to draw a card, so nice mana sink, and a 3 mana permanent to kind of bridge the gap for In Search of Greatness. Then at 4 mana, besides our full playset of Leyline, we also have two copies of Beast Whisper as a 2-3 creature, saying whenever we cast a creature spell we get to draw a card, so that can also help us go off, and two copies of Nylea Keen-Eyed, the 5-6 legendary enchantment creature god that's indestructible, but only turns into a creature as long as our devotion to green is at least 5, and that also synergizes with our In Search of Greatness, which provides two green devotion for us. Then we also get a 1 mana discount on each creature spell we cast, and then for 2 and a green we get a mana sync ability, revealing the top card of our library. If it's a creature card we may put it into our hand, otherwise we may put it into our graveyard. And then at 5 mana we've got 2 copies of Vivian Monsters Advocate, with a passive ability letting us look at the top card of our library at any time, and we may cast creature spells from the top of our library, so that can also help us go off. The plus 1 makes a 3-3 beast with our choice of Reach, Vigilance or Trample, and the minus 2 can help us search up an additional creature when we cast one. And then last but certainly not least we've got the full playset of Nissa who shakes the world, which we can usually cast around turn 3 in this deck, but if we get to cast her for free using In Search of Greatness and Leyline, of course we'll still have all our lands untapped to take advantage of Nissa's passive ability, where our forest tap for additional green mana, the plus 1 can untap one of our lands, put 3 counters on it, also very synergistic with our Cradle of the Sun as we mentioned, and then the minus 8 can let us search for any number of forests and make them all indestructible, 
and then a mana base, just 16 basic forests, because of course we also have Kazandu Mammoth and our Tangled Florahedron as additional lands, and plenty of mana creatures to generate extra mana. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. This hand's not particularly exciting, no Ley Line, no In Search of Greatness, no 1 mana Elves. So we'll take a Mulligan, this is better. And yeah, we can potentially lift a Dream here with Ley Line, In Search of Greatness and Nissa. So I don't need to keep Gilded Goose, since we can just play Tapped Kazanu Mammoth to make it safe. Opponent with an Archfiend's Vessel, so we gotta hope they don't have Hand Disruption here to take away one of our combo pieces. Opponent Black Whites, Cruel Celebrants. And yeah, they won't be able to easily interact with our enchantments. Blood Artist to join Celebrant, so those could be dangerous. Put a Nissa in play for free. And then we'll make some mana. Untap our forests. And then we can attack and still play a Leafkin afterwards. Alright, not a bad turn 3. Next turn we can just activate our Leyline to pump our team. Our opponent puts Loris in hand, so they might be planning to chump with a Vessel. Do I want a Leafkin Druid? It draws a card with Beast Whisper, but at this point we're probably just activating Leyline, so it doesn't do much for me. So, make some mana. And then we can activate Leyline right now. And then I can attack with my Forest and Beast Whisper and then still use our Vigilant Forest to tap for mana to activate Leyline a second time. So our opponent falls to 11 and then drains us twice, going back up to 13. Opponent can play Lurus, get back Vessel, but they're still facing this giant army. Vessel turns into a demon. And Kazandu Mammoth doesn't seem necessary. Another Ley Line, I guess, is worth playing. So, let's attack with these, and then we can activate Leyline a bunch. And then I could activate again, might as well. So maybe should have attacked with one more creature here. We're at 11. Next turn we can ultimate Nissa as well for what it's worth. Could have also played an extra Nissa just to make an extra 3-3 land if we wanted to. Sign in blood. Draws two and loses two and our opponent explodes. Alright, so maybe could have played that last turn a bit better but yeah, Nissa on turn 3 with In Search of Greatness and Leyline usually leads to a good thing. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand looks a little bit too fair, but we do have a turn 1 Lenor Elves, so that's making me consider it. Turn 1 Elf, maybe turn 2 Mammoth. It's not exciting, but I'll try it. Ideally, we can draw one of our 5 mana Planeswalkers to ramp into. Our 
opponent blue green turn to explore so a ramp deck so do we want to play a mammoth I think I do need some pressure in case they run out of planeswalker all right, so Sultai deck and a Midnight Clock into maybe another ramp spell like Rose Spiral here. All right, so I can play a land and then double two drop. Cast this now, and then probably want extra pressure from Paradise Druids as opposed to. Playing the Leafkin, which can maybe make more mana. And there's a Gross Barrel. Alright, hopefully dodge a Sweeper. It's gonna be Teferi, Master of Time. So your opponent's looking to take some extra turns. Could see Time Warp in our future as well. And this has a nice draw. So we can play Nissa. We will not fail. And send everyone at Teferi. If we send two creatures, that could also work. I guess we don't necessarily need the third attacking Teferi. Probably should have sent a three power creature at their face. This was... And then I can still run out of Leafkin. And I think we hold Mammoth. Opponent's got their own Nissa. They might have some fog effects as well to prevent combat damage to save their Nissa, but I'm happy enough taking three. Do not test me. It's gonna be Explorer into Fabled Passage and another Explorer, so at least we don't need to play around a fog effect. So our opponent's at 13. I can animate a land. Let's say they block my mammoth. They're still taking 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Not quite lethal. So we probably want to take out Nissa then. So I need to send 3 at Nissa. Russ can go face, and then they're probably going to eat a Paradise Druids, which is fine. Could have also swapped Paradise Druid Lenor Elves with one of the three powered creatures. I can help you no longer. And I guess we'll play the Goose. Alright, everything on the board here. We're top decking. Let's see what the opponent can muster. Tapped Snarl into Garruk, Cursed Huntsman. Makes two wolves. Stay on the trail. And land attacks Nissa. Might as well trade. Alright, so we can play a goose. Now if I send everyone their opponents, they can block two three powered guys. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten still take lethal, so face it is. Uh, 
All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a very exciting hand. We've got the Ley Line in Search of Greatness Nissa combo, even a turn one Lunar Elves. Facing a life gain deck. Turn two bishops, so they do potentially have a good start here. I play Greatness plus Goose, and then probably a tapped Florahedron. Yeah, I don't know if turn three Nissa is necessarily going to be good enough if her opponent has a Resplendent Angel here. It's going to be useful Valkyrie instead. All right, so we can maybe expect Collected Company next turn. For now, take one. Speaker of Heavens could potentially turn into a problem next turn. For now, we get to untap with Nissa. And then play Best Cherry. And I could play Goose, draw a card. Another Elf. Yeah, I guess we'll play Elf, draw a card, and then I can still untap my land. Or I could untap land first and attack with it. Opponent chumps to keep their life total high. Also makes the spirits. And then I can still play Mammoth. Also wouldn't be able to draw a card with this. Alright, not a bad turn three. Although might not be good enough if our opponent has a good company here. It's going to be a Johnny Strength of the Pride. At least they're not at 35 yet. And our opponent concedes. Maybe a little bit premature here since they didn't seem super dead yet. Although I guess we are close to activating our Leyline of Abundance to put counters on the team. Which would be quite strong as well here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, this hand seems acceptable. We've got a turn 1 Goose, turn 2 Mana Creature. Facing another Lurus deck. And we might even transform our growing rights if this game opponent on the Aura version. So probably go with a Leafkin here, and then next turn we can play our Nissa. They do have a turn to Spirit Dancer, unfortunately, so that's gonna give us some trouble. Can attack, play Florahedron second main. And we might already have to chump with our Florahedron to protect Nissa if the Spirit Dancer grows large enough. Staggering Insights for card advantage. And a Curious Obsession. So our opponent would draw two if they can hit us. We do have the option to chump. If we chump, we can still transform Growing Rights next turn by animating one of our lands. I think it's still worth it here. Alright, so step one, play Leyline. Step two, attack. And we can make a lot of mana here. Could even activate Leyline, but I think I'd rather play out some stuff. So play our Growing Rites. Maybe find a Beast Whisper before playing Paradise Druid. And then the Transformed Growing Rites can also help us activate Leyline. I think we might want to land our Elves, just have an extra Chum Blocker that's cheaper to play. Then Growing Rhines transforms. 
And that should let us activate Ley Line 2 here. If Spirit Dancer ever gains flying, we're going to be in trouble too, although I guess the Goose can still jump there. But yeah, Line Fling makes it very difficult to race. Spirit Dancer attacks. Could block with a bunch of creatures, although they still have Selfless Savior. Probably just going to jump with an Elf. Activate Ley Line. It's going to be an Adanto Vanguard on defense, plus an Alsaid. Make that two. So your opponent is running low on enchantments here. And, uh... Yeah, we can tap our Cradle. Animate it with Nissa. So we can tap it again. So, let's say we activate Ley Line now. Move to Combots. Opponent can essentially pay 4 life with a Vanguard instead of taking the damage from our land. And yeah, we'll let damage happen. And then I can still play Best Cherry here. And pass it back. Alright, our opponent scoops it up. Cradle untapped with Nissan generating a ton of mana to leverage our ley line. And we could even ultimate our Nissan next turn if we wanted to. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. What do we think of this hand? On the play, we don't necessarily need to have the most explosive draw. This hand is pretty average. We can play a turn 3 Beast Whisper, hope it survives, and then draw some cards. I'll try it. On the draw, this would certainly be a mulligan. And then probably play a tapped Mammoth here. Opponent on Gruul. Dinosaurs, it looks like. Alright, against dinosaurs, we need to be able to go big, since the opponent's also going to go big. Turn 2 can expect a raptor or some other creature to give dinosaurs discounts since that it's going to be a second commune. So opponents off to a relatively slow start themselves. Finds another land. Alright, so we'll play Beast Whisper so next turn we can start going off. Hope the opponent doesn't have Ferocidon to deal one damage whenever we play a creature. It's gonna be a Rotting Regisaur, that one we can shun block for a while, so I'm not too concerned. So we want to play creatures to turn on Leafkin Druid here. A ley Line's nice, so next turn that can give us a nice mana boost. In Search of Greatness. So this now makes two mana. Yeah, we'll just play another Paradise Root here, I think. And then next turn we can play Ley Line. All our creatures tap for a ton of mana. Opponent's got a Ripjaw Raptor on defense. Do we take seven? I think for now we do. Another Ley Line. Alright, so let's play a Ley Line, play another Ley Line, and then could start activating a Ley Line too, could play some creatures out. How much mana are we working with here? 10, so I can play Goose and still activate Ley Line. So let's start by playing Goose. And then, 
Yeah, probably gonna end up activating Leyline here. And then I'm okay chumping with Gilded Goose if needed. And next turn we can activate Leyline multiple times. I guess Embercleaf kills us, but I don't think blocking with Beast Whisper is going to help much. Alright, they had the Embercleave. Yeah, still would have died even with uh, Beast Whisper on blocking duty. So, could have played slightly differently where we chumped earlier on the Registaur, but then we had less mana to work with. Could have kept more creatures on defense to activate Leyline in the opponent's turn. But at the end of the day, Amberclee was probably going to get us on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and this hand has the combo pieces. The only issues were a light on lands. We have one tap land, so won't be able to play turn one alpha goose. But I think it's still worth it. If we draw an untapped land, then we get to still play In Search of Greatness turn two, Nissa turn three. So we'll try it. All right, so we've got one turn to draw an untapped land. If not, hopefully Lanor Elves gets us there. Put on to red-white with a Servo Exhibition, so some sort of tokens deck. And we hit our land. So next turn we get to play Nyssa. Could be a Tempered Steel deck. Or just red-white tokens. Dragon Fodder, so it looks more like a token stack. They might be using Transmogrify and uh, Creativity to cheat a Crater Hoof in play to kill us, so... Not having any instant speed removal to punish that is problematic. So yeah, we could be facing lethal next turn, but for now we're just gonna run out some creatures. I think I prefer getting some Mana Elves in play before the Beast Whisper, just to give us more mana to leverage Leyline as well. Can attack with our lands. I guess I could play a Beast Whisperer. Sure. Let's see if we're dead. For mana, do they have the Transmogrify or Creativity? Nope, just a Banalish Marshal. So I guess it's not a Transmogrify deck then. So we might be safe. A Lanor Elf seems worth keeping. Then we'll start by playing the Elf to turn on Leafkin Druids, and Forest is a great pickup. So we can keep casting more spells. Florahedron's nice too. Nylea we can play. Rise, my elemental friend. Best Sherry. And then we can play one mana Florahedron, still a draw card with Best Sherry. So we're definitely going off now. Alright, and we'll pass. Got Nylea as a mana sink, Leyline as a mana sink. We get to scry towards more action. Gilded Goose is fine. Another best cherry. So could start activating Nylea here if we wanted to, or can start activating Leyline. A wealth of options. And our opponent concedes. Alright, so yeah, we got to see our green greatness deck do its thing multiple times. 
and In Search of Greatness definitely at its best when combined with Ley Lines. By itself, not an incredibly impressive card, even though the Scry 1 can be nice in a longer game, but most games in Historic are over pretty quickly, so you need to have those explosive starts. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.